four. Do you have a gardening problem? We can help you with that. A program dedicated to help you grow a better garden, maintain your landscape, grow healthier trees, make that grass look a little bit greener, as well as preserving what you grow. We're here to help you with your gardening problem. You're tuned in to Garden Talk Radio. You're listening to the most informational packed hour of garden-focused radio in the country and on the Internet with your host, husband and wife team, Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Welcome to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is presented to you by Power Planters Earth Augers, the official digging tool to find the right size for your digging projects. Visit powerplanter.com. Thank you for taking time out of your day to join us to talk gardening for the next hour. Whether you're listening to us on one of the 16 stations, our show is being broadcasted on in 2020 through our radio app, through our website, under the Season 4 tab at the top of the page. That website is the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com, as well as other avenues in studio video replay, podcast replay. We thank you for taking time to be part of the program. I'm your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner. Holly Baird. This program is about you, for you, to help your garden grow better, to maintain your landscape, to grow healthier trees, preserving what you grow, make your grass looking greener, as well as everything indoors and out. Final show of 2020, season four. We'll talk more about that later on. But right now, if you've got a question now or throughout the winter months, uh, we will be back live again in March, but through that time, if you've got a question, you can certainly give us a call or an email. Our email address is gardentalkradio at gmail.com. That's gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Or you can give us a call anytime right now during the show or anytime you got a question. 1-800-927-SHOW, 1-800-927-SHOW. We've got a fantastic show lined up for you, as we do each and every week. We're going to first talk about poison soil killer compost, and then we're going to go over things we wish we would have done different in our garden this year, as well as our guest, author Sue Gortez, will be with us, and we'll have some people to thank. So let's get in the program, Holly. Let's talk about poison soil, and then we'll talk about killer compost, and we'll, we'll address that a little bit. What is poison soil? Poison soil is basically any type of soil that is something that you don't want to grow in. I mean, you could probably grow pretty flowers in it, but anything uh, possibly. That, possibly, but anything you don't want to grow vegetables in. Well, that's the thing. Uh, poison soil, most of the time, it is because it's man uh, man created uh, the poison soil. So there's some things that we need to be aware of. What, what are some different types of poison soil so we can kind of get on the same page? Sure. So there's a lot of different contaminants that poison. Well, I guess that would be a better term, contaminated soil versus mm-hmm. poison soil, both under the same umbrella. One seems more harsh than the other, but they're both bad. Right. So um, common common contaminants, and this is typically found in urban soils or soils that were in an urban area, um, something like that. So that would include pesticides, petroleum products, radon, asbestos, lead, and then chromated copper, arsenic, ars- yeah, arsenic, and then creosote. And then a lot of this is caused by <clears throat> human activities, whether that be like industrial dumping, land development. Or, you know, let's call it what it is, agricultural use. We, the pesticides are used very heavily on agricultural fields. Right. So this is like more of the urban. Okay. Um, Even like heavy car and truck traffic or if there was, say, like a gas station where you lived at one point. Old old industrial factory. Yeah, or something Mm -hmm. like that. So, I mean, even here in Milwaukee, like there's areas that are are being taken over by some different urban housing that used to be old industrial factories. So if you think about that there could be contaminants in that soil. Well, we need a soil test. Number one, if we have, uh, if you're growing in a new area, uh, you've moved in or you're 
uh, you, you've bought a plot or whatever the case is, you first want to get a soil test for a couple of different reasons. One, to see where you're at on the, on the levels, uh, your pH levels, your nutrient value of the soil, and if there's any contaminants or poisons in the soil, then, you know, if you had the poisons or the contaminated soil, there are mm, some ways of remitigating it, but the best and easiest answer to that situation is extraction and bring in new material. There are ways of baking this out. They they do this in some places where they, you know, they're cleaning an area out and they basically put it through a big heater or an oven and they they bake some of this, the, the toxins out and make the soil cleaner than what it ever was before man got here. Right, and that is that is an option, I guess, um, because if you are just trying to. Uh, growing your backyard, you can't necessarily bake the soil. Right. So let's, yeah. let's go with that avenue. We, we've got the soil tested. We find out there's some contaminants in the soil, variety of fill in the blank. What are our options? Well, um, you can just basically take some sort of, uh, like a rubber matting and put that over your soil like and then, capping it, like capping it. Yeah. Yep. And then putting, making raised beds or straw bales or uh, containers. Not growing in the ground. Now, uh, what what we find in a lot of older cities is lead in the soil from a variety of sources. So if we find and that we know that we have lead in the soil, that doesn't mean necessarily growing is a no-no. There are some plants you can grow in lead soil that won't uptake the lead into the actual edible portion of the plant. There's some that you that you don't want to plant. Right. So anything that you're going to eat the root. So potatoes, beets, carrots, radishes. Um, if the root, if you're eating the root and it's touching the soil, no, no. Yeah. Now, another thing to keep in mind is But that other things like tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, totally fine because it's not uptaking that lead uh, item in, in incorporating it in the fruit. However, okay. you want to make sure that if even if you grow in that soil, then like tomatoes say, mm-hmm. you want to make sure you do clean them. Well, you mean like wash them off, scrub them, right? Whatever splash up they may occur, yeah. the residue laying on the on the skin up, right? Right. Uh, we've heard, or some people have heard, that you can use roly polies. They'll eat the lead out of the soil. That's not necessarily the case. If you don't know what a roly poly is, it's that's some a country call it, term. That's a country term. <laughs> some people call it a pill bug yeah. or a potato bug. It's those little tiny. They almost look like miniature, tiny, super tiny armadillos. Uh-huh. And then if you get near them, they roll into a little ball. That's their defense mechanism. So roly polies, yes, they can eat some of the lead. There's many different decomposers that can, but that is one, and um, or they are one. And then the problem is, is they're not like if your plan. You're like, oh, I have lead in my soil. I'm just going to get a bunch of these bugs uh-huh. and put them in my soil. Like, that's not going to take care of it. Now, the interesting thing about lead toxicity in soil, it won't transfer. It doesn't work through the soil. Like, if you've got uh, the, the backyard's grass and there's a high level of lead and you put a raised bed and that soil's touching where that lead is at, it doesn't work itself through the good soil that you've brought in. It's very interesting. But what some, what people will recommend doing is putting that cap or that mat down or a very thick uh, tarp or canvas just to keep that separation. And it is best, uh, you know, to just start fresh, raise bed, uh, containers, grow bags, that type of thing to avoid the whole problem. Now, other things that people have issue, uh, one more thing here is, is, uh, not you know the soil has what is called a buffering capacity capacity what is that sure so this is for like say that you maybe you have good soil uh-huh. and but you live in the city and you're concerned about whether it be rainwater like acid rain or some sort of uh fluoride or chlor- chlorine potentially a runoff of a some runoff sort yeah. or some sort so soil does have some some buffering capacity. Or a, a resistance to absorb that bad thing. Right. Okay. So it doesn't mean that, like, if you if you have a lot of runoff, that it's going to be okay. But if you're watering through city water that is chlorinated, mm-hmm. it's not going to affect your plants. Well, chlor- we've, we've found studies as well as that chlorinated water doesn't necessarily hurt the soil. However, there can be other items in that water 
that can be harmful to the soil, but that soil has that resistance built into it. Um, so it's best to bring in compost. And that leads us to the second part of this discussion, which is killer compost. Now, we can discuss killer compost, but we uh, was fortunate enough to interview, meet in person and interview uh, Joe Lampo. He is host of PBS's Growing a Greener World. Uh, I think they're on their 10th or 11th season now. Check your local listings for availability in your area. Also, the Create Channel. And we talk about, uh, we talk, I and he and I talked about killer compost that he had in his garden. And uh, he'll explain that uh, uh, about all of what's going on. Because a lot of people have, I, I've seen this over the last year, they've dealt with poison compost. And you had this problem, and people don't know it exists. Uh, if you can just briefly tell the story to, to inform people of what to need to look for so they don't, like, ruin their garden as, as you did. Well, first of all, it, it typically shows up in from horse manure. So if you are using hay in your garden that has been consumed by horses, and, of course, they it breaks down in the compost pile, which is what happened to me. You know, we have horses. They eat the hay from the that comes from the farmer that sprays his fields with an herbicide. It's a persistent herbicide. The farmers like it because they only have to spray it one time. It kills all the broadleaf weeds, but it doesn't harm the grass, which becomes the hay. So they'll harvest clean hay. We feed it to our horses. It's, it's, it doesn't break down, so it's safe for the animals to consume, which is why farmers like to use it. But the problem is because it doesn't break down, the herbicide is still effective as an herbicide, even in the composting situation. Through, through the animal and, and all the way through. Yeah. Months and months later, when it's broken down, it's beautiful black gold compost. That herbicide is still there at full strength, but you can't tell that. So you think you've, you're, you're supplementing your garden with organic manure, right? And you mix it in, which is what I did. And it's fun, ironic because I warned people not to do this, and I still did it myself because it looked so good, and I... I talked myself into using it, and I did, and it didn't take a week. When, once those new seedlings, those roots spread out and came in contact with the compost that was tainted, the plants just started wilting, and I knew right away. It's an instant. Once you know what to look for, it was instant. Almost kind of looked like the plant wasn't getting water that it was needing. It just kind of wilted to nothing. Shriveled, wilted, stunted growth, disfigured. There was a lot of symptoms to it, but you instantly know. And then the problem with it is... You only have two choices. You can wait it out, which can take literally three or four years, as it did even with me, proactively, or you can dig it out and replace it. I had 30 cubic yards of soil. I, that, that's at least three large dump trucks loads of, soil, loads of soil. I didn't have the time or the money to change it out and buy it. So I waited it out, but I also proactively tried to do all that I could do as a human, which there's not much you can do. These are synthetic compounds that are designed not to break down. But if you expose them to UV light, air and water, and heat... That, that means just turning your soil extra and exposing it. Nature will kind of revert it back to natural. It will, it will accelerate the decomposition or the deactivation of the herbicides. So I, I knocked a year off of it. Okay. Now, you can find this on growinggreenworld.com. Yeah. What, what is the title of the show? Do you recall what the name of that is? Poison compost? or well, the topic, if you, if you just went onto the website and, and typed in killer compost... Okay. That'll get there. And, and I would encourage everybody to watch that because I know several people over the last year has dealt with this and didn't know what it was until after the fact. Yeah. So know where your source is coming from. Know what, what, what it was. is basically know the whole cycle. Yeah, and in fact, I mean, if you really want to play it safe, just avoid using horse manure or, or ask your farmer. If you can get to the source of where it was harvested, uh, ask them if they use that herbicide. It's got, you know, it's it's got different trade names, but the active ingredient. There's a number of them, and the one down in Georgia is picloram that is the problem. But the other thing you can do is a bioassay test. So if you have a big pile of manure and you're curious as to know whether or not it's tainted, you can take some of that manure and mix it in with clean soil into a pot, and then on another pot, get what you know is clean soil. Like if you went to a garden center and bought sterile soil. So you have two pots, one with sterile soil and one with half sterile soil and half of that compost. Mix it up. Put, put tomato seeds or bean seeds in the 50-50 pot and the same with a clean pot. And then just give it four weeks. See what happens. Observe. If they're, if they're both clean, they'll both look good and healthy. But if the tainted one is truly tainted, you will know it because you'll see it in the seedlings. And if that's the case, you know, stay away from that, uh, that manure and, and run. Don't walk and get away from it. So Killer Compost, uh, great explanation of Joe Lample, their host of PBS's Growing Green World, explained uh, to us. 
And so that's what you need to know about poison uh, soil or toxic soil and killer compost. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen listen to our show. This is our 35th or last show of 2020. Did you miss last week's show? We talked about common and uncommon garden methods, growing teas and herbs and spices. And our guest was Diane Devereaux, the Get Canning Diva. You can listen to that show by going to your favorite podcast platform and searching the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener podcast. Or we will make it even easier to find them. Send us an email to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. And in the subject line, put show 34. And we will send you the link. We will be right back. We do not go anywhere. We'll be talking about... Things that we wish we would have done this year in the garden. Thank you. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, a program to help you grow a better garden, maintain your landscape, help your trees grow better, make that grass look greener, and preserving what you grow for indoor and out. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Do your trees look sad? When we here at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardens have a tree or shrub issue, Dr. Jim's is the product we reach for as it is the product that works. It really provides results. Their small batch, extra potent blend of readily available nutrients is exactly what your trees, plants, and bushes need to regain their health and stay bug free. It's super easy to use. It feeds the microbes and adds new life to your soil. So you can grow stronger plants, chemical-free, environmentally responsible fertilizer that works. It will put a smile on your face and your plants. To find out more about Tree Secret and other products, visit drjims.com. That's D-R-J-I-M-Z dot C-O-M. Trimbin turns any turn to a workstation. Comfortably sort your herbs stride flowers, cannabis, and more. Easily collect pollen with the static brush and mirror finish collection tray. High walls keep your work contained. To get yours, visit harvest-more.com. Made in California. Do not go anywhere. There is more of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show to come, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool. To find the right size for your digging project, visit powerplanter.com. The number one key to healthy, productive plants are the roots. Starting from seed to full-grown plants, RootMaker.com has the answer. From seed-starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots, creating a fabulous root system, never again will you have root-bound plants. To multiple-gallon grow bag sizes to raise beds, RootMaker.com has your grow needs covered. Visit RootMaker.com. Use coupon code TWVG at checkout and get 10% off your entire order. Brought to you by Blue Ribbon Organics, providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardens, farms, landscaping, and more. Visit BlueRibbonOrganics.com or call 262-497-8539 to find their products nearest you. Blue Mel's Garden and Landscape Center offers an awesome selection of high-quality garden and landscape products. We have just the plants you're looking for. Annuals, perennials, veggies, herbs, and more. Plus, you can always count on us to answer all of your questions and offer expert advice. Blue Mills also carries the largest selection of bulk landscape materials in the area. Enjoy a beverage from our coffee shop while your kids run around in our huge playground. Join our growing list of highly satisfied customers. Visit the garden center that offers everything you're looking for. Visit Blue Mills today. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Neptune Harvest, Happy Leaf LED, Dripworks, We Grow Indoors, Deer Defeat, Harvest More, Blue Ribbon Organics, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center, Chip Drop. Find all sponsors at thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool. To find the right size for your digging project, visit powerplanter.com. Now here are your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Well, hindsight is always twenty twenty. What we once wish we knew when we were younger or last week or last month or earlier today would have made things a lot easier for us in the projects in which we would have was and have tackled 
We're going to go over some things that we wish we would have done differently or changed or not done at all in our garden this year. Maybe you can relate to those. First will be not growing potatoes. We did grow potatoes. We wish we wouldn't have grown potatoes. And Holly, you can explain the reasons why we wish we didn't grow potatoes now back four, five, six months ago. Well, well, um, so I don't know what happens in our garden, but so that's not to know. That's not to know, but we, so we didn't grow them directly in soil this, like not directly into the ground this year. We grew them in raised bed. It was a raised bed that we fresh compost, fresh compost. And yeah, we just, uh, we did get potatoes. We got potatoes, but they were, you know, small, kind of like new, new potato size, whatever. And we didn't get a lot. And um, it was just highly disappointing. Now, now, before you write in or email us or give us a call, we've done potatoes in every way, shape, and form in the ground, a, a, a no-till, in compost, uh, in fresh compost, in old soil. In We've done it every way possible, and we still don't get the results. We get potatoes, but we just don't get the yield like many of you do that we see on social media, where you plant one potato and you get four, five, six, seven of them in return off that one plant. We're doing, we plant one and we get two small ones. So right. the return's not there. Right. So we don't really know why because my sister, my sister's garden is about, I would say, I don't know. 15 minutes. Well, uh, so no, not 15 okay. minutes. I'm trying to think in me- measures of distance. Oh. Probably about six miles yeah. to the east. Maybe less. And um, and she has similar soil, but she just gets huge potatoes. Right. So we don't know what's going on. So, when so we're we, going to stop. Right. You can uh, you can buy organic potatoes or you can buy inorganic potatoes. You can get 10 pounds for like $3.47 at the big box store. I can put a, I can put a tomato in that spot and get massive returns off that tomato versus a, two potatoes that takes the same equivalent amount of time. Well, let's talk about tomatoes. We wish we would have grew more tomatoes, as many of you uh, who garden or farm. You never have enough land. You always want more. You always want more. And we planted, uh, we reduced our volume when we went to the raised beds. We went from, what, about 60, 80 tomatoes down to 30 in one raised bed, which they did fine. They did great. We just didn't have enough of them. Right. And that's one thing is that we we do wish we had had more they did you really well. We will change that next year. Yeah, for sure. We're going to at least double, if not mm-hmm. uh, add a few additional ones uh, in the ground somewhere. Uh, another thing is uh, cardboard in the bottom of raised beds. Happy with some. Didn't do it with others. And we got a mixed bag on that. Yeah, some. some... No, explain the practice there. So the idea is that when, be- when you put your raised beds down or when you build your raised beds, you put down a layer of cardboard uh, to help kind of suppress the weeds, um, and then just have a layer there. And it's going to break down, I mean, but it'll help suppress the weeds. That first year to kind of really choke things out yeah. and, and the thistles and other things with that. And that's what we had the problem with. We had, we've got four beds, five beds. I don't even remember. What do we got? We got five beds. Five. Five. Yeah. We put the cardboard down heavy in one bed and the other four we did not. And the other four grew things much, much better than the one that we had put cardboard in but the one that we had put cardboard in we didn't have the thistles or the grass that we had to fight with but the yield on those plants just wasn't that great so it was kind of good and bad all together right exactly that like we it, it was, i don't know i think it just depends and i think maybe that's just a personal decision some people do put like weed weed cloth down weed fabric right Hardware cloth if they might have moles or voles. So like, there's a lot of options, but we, we chose not to for those other beds and then we did for the one. Well, the thing with the, um, the, the cardboard, it, what with the thistles, it, with the ones that we didn't use, you know, we fought with, we used an organic weed killer on it. And the, the, and we, we did studies and we found out that, and we did research that as the thistles can p- continue to emerge, you can cut them back real deep. And you just continue to stress them out to where they can't get at the sunlight to photosynthesize. You burn the tops off with the organic weed killer, and eventually they stop coming back. And that's what happened. Right. We didn't have to fight that all through. And then as the foliage of the plants grew, it again suffocated and reduced the amount of light that was getting in there. So it worked fine. Now, on a positive uh, note, we wish we would have planted more uh, raspberry, golden raspberry, uh, golden raspberries. Yeah, those are delicious. And uh, we bl- we bought one plant. 
um, in spring. Right. Whenever that was. And spring would have been in spring. Yeah. Yeah, you said spring whenever I don't that was. I if it was spring or yeah, early it was, summer. It was, it was spring. Yeah, so we bought one in early spring, or no, it was early summer, I think. But whatever. And then it gave us a few strawberries, not strawberries, raspberries. About two dozen. Yeah, and um, they were delicious. Yeah. But now we want more. So we will extend that. Obviously, we... We did a video on it, how to plant a raspberry, a raspberry plant on our website and our YouTube channel. You can find those both uh, searching the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener uh, by doing that. Uh, another thing is um, str- we, we should have started with stronger, healthier eggplants and pepper seedlings. We've, we, we, we struggled with this the last couple of years where we didn't have the 8 or 9 or 10 inch plant that you buy at the garden center. We had three, four-inch plants. They did produce. They took a very long time to produce. And with the eggplants, they were so small that they, they transitional, the planting shock got uh, most of them. So we did purchase a couple. We did purchase one, and then we've harvested many eggplants off of those. Uh, your sister, I, we planted those from seedlings, the very small ones, in that above-raised bed, and they did very prolifically. They really kept up and, and did good. So it does work out. However, if you can get a very decent size plant start, you're far, far ahead of the game because those don't, you don't have to wait as long for them to get mature and put fruit on, uh, and produce. So, uh, that, that's another thing there. Uh, so those, those are just some of the, uh, many things. And I'm sure you can make a list, uh, in your garden, on your homestead, in your urban lot of things that you wish you would have done and wouldn't have done. Uh, but that's the whole point of this. We we learn as we go, and we know what not to do. That's the thing. We we need to not do these things or do these things next year. Otherwise, if we keep repeating ourselves, what is that called? Insanity. Yeah, and we've got enough insanitation. Uh, I guess is the Insani- insanitation in the world right now that we don't need to add to it for uh, in in our world. Lack of, lack of sanity. Uh, I, that would be a yeah. That'd be another. That would be a good term. Mm-hmm. Well, summer's over. Fall's here, winter is near, fall festival is getting close uh, and almost over now, and the yard still has uh, needs some needs, and you've forgotten about it, but there's still time. Don't worry about it. There's still time. Yep, just because it's fall, and we don't want to forget about our yards and those Japanese beetles either. They may be gone, but they're not far. Not they're only... plotting. They're going to come back. <laughs> not only if you, if they... you don't take care of them. Right. They feasted on your roses and berries. They laid eggs in your turf so they can start again next year. So you can take a stand with Phylum's Grub Gone. Grub Gone is a non-chemical BT granular that specifically targets scare pests and their larvae. Simply apply the granular with a spreader, irrigate into the soil, and let the naturally occurring bacteria do its job. Not only is Grub Gone easy to use, but is the only non-chemical choice that effectively controls grubs. And the best part about it, it's non-toxic to bees and other pollinators and beneficial insects. In fact, Grub Gone has zero label restrictions for use around flowering plants. So you don't have to get on your hands and knees and remove dandelions in the spring or fall before using the product. To find out about Grub Gone, go to phylumbioproducts.com. That's P-H-Y-L-L-O-M bioproducts.com, the natural choice. You can also check out the other products they have available. Hang around. Do not go anywhere. We've got a, half the show's over. We've got a half a show to go before season's over. Susan, uh, Sue Gortez will be with us, author and speaker. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show. You can bet the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener's phone lines are always jammed during the show. So Joey and Holly keep their phone lines open 24-7 to help you. Call anytime, 24-7. Just dial 1-800-927-7469. Or just remember, one 800 927 show S H O W. Leave a message and they will call you back. Planting conditions are always favorable with the Power Planter Earth Auger. No matter what the job is, Power Planter has the right size for you. Simply attach to a drill and let the Power Planter do the work for you, creating holes fast and efficiently with ease. Find the size that fits your project at powerplanter.com. Do not go anywhere. There is more of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show to come which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool. To find the right size for your digging project, visit powerplanter.com. Pomona's Universal Pectin is a high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, 
you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. You can use sugar or honey to sweeten. Pomona's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Also available at natural food stores and online. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Phylum Bioproducts, Dr. Jim's, MI Greenhouse LLC, Green Gobbler, Water Hoop, Seed Savers Exchange. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Today is the last day for bulk material at Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center. They've got 40 varieties to pick from largest in the area. They're going to shut down the yard until spring. So if you still need compost, gravel, sand, wood chips, or multitude of other items, you can get that picked up today or delivered before end of day. And uh, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center can be found at 4930 West Loomis Road, just off of Layton and Greenfield. You can give them a call at 414-282-4220. And you can visit them online at bluemills.com. And we want to thank Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center for coming on and being the official garden center of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show for the fourth consecutive year. And thank them and thank you for supporting them. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool. To find the right size for your digging project, visit PowerPlanter.com. Now here are your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Welcome back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Holly, let's go to the hotline and bring in our guest for this week. Sue Getz is a garden designer, writer, and speaker. Through her garden design business, Creative Gardener, she works with clients, personalizing garden spaces, and Sue is also certified as a professional horticulturist, and she's the author of A Taste for Herbs and is very passionate about herbs. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for taking time out of your day, not only to join Holly, myself, and educate us, but all of our listeners across the country. We thank you for that. Yeah. So you're very passionate about growing herbs. Is there something that has that you've always enjoyed about it? Why herbs? Why not like tomatoes or peppers or eggplants? What What's the where Where did this love from for herbs come from? Um, you know, it's, it's been long, long ago. I, I, when I started gardening, um, when I was younger, I actually tend to just grow things that I can do something with, like, um, you know, not necessarily just ornamental in the garden. And so I've always had a, a passion for that. And so maybe a bit selfishness, I want to know what a plant is going to do for me. <laughs> so what's it going to give back to me? And when we think of herbs, uh, they're the most giving group of plants you're ever going to find. Uh, we get so much back. We get flavor and medicine and, and aromatherapy, the garden. And and so it's almost like, why not herbs? <laughs> they give so much to us. Well, and that's the thing. Um, there's herbs that we are learning about that, didn't know exist such as the the I think it's called the toothache plant where you chew it and numbs your your gums. Uh, so there's a lot of different <laughs> different types of plants that uh, the common gardener may not be familiar with. Yes, right, right. And I think that when you start thinking about, huh, what does this is an herb? What does it do? I think we as gardeners just really want to dive a little deeper, uh, more about it. What what will it do? And, and you know, what what does it taste like? What does it smell like? Uh, what, what it, how will it heal me? All of those things. And, and you don't ask that of many plants. I think that that's just a category of plants that are so diverse to do that. Definitely. Now, many people may not think of attracting pollinators with herbs. What are some herbs that attract pollinators and how can they be used around ve- vegetables best or more efficient, most efficiently? Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you look at um, a list of plants that will attract pollinators to the garden. You'll see a lot of herbs really rise to the top of the list. And and I think they're ones everybody knows. They're pretty common. Things like bee balm. I mean, you think about um, even the name tells us right there. Uh, you know, a monarda is what those are or 
Hummingbird Mint, which is um, Agastakis, Rosemary. Everybody seems to know rosemary and lavender, even chives, parsley, fennel. I mean, you can see this just is really a long list. And, and so really kind of adding that diversity to a garden that will attract different pollinators as well. That's what herbs will do. They're attracting hummingbirds, which do a little bit of pollinating and, and, and birds and bees and, and butterflies and, and all of those things. So the diversity of the range of herbs uh, really do a good job. And then, of course, in your veggie garden, I actually, um, in a past garden I had, it's a different garden I have now. I actually had a little hedge of parsley along the edge of my vegetable bed and I'll run like a hedge of chives. So you can really mingle some of these plants into vegetable gardens so you can really encourage a lot of pollinator activity. Um, and, and even just like a, a potted roseberry next to a raised bed or, or something like that, I think you could really start to explore different ways because um, that roseberry or that lavender that you're going to harvest for, you know, to flavor food or to, to make a skin healing uh, treatment, you also are attracting pollinators. So you kind of see this multi-purpose use they're going to give the garden anyway. Well, and that's the other thing. Uh, we practiced the, the uh, pr- method of polyculture where we would plant a zucchini and then plant basil around it, try to smother the, the flavor to get, uh, of the zucchini to keep you know uh, the squash vine borer or squash bugs away from it to confuse them and they go elsewhere. So that's another, another practice in which you can incorporate and actually get kind of two crops in one location. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can just see this. The more you can explore that diversity in the garden, how it helps other plants as well. And, and uh, you know, like if, if you want to keep plants off of other things, basil is, tends to get, you know, white fly and things like that. But if you plant it near some marigolds and just the kind of things you do in your vegetable garden anyway, um, you can really kind of see how you can explore that diversity as well. Well, now I have to ask you about this. On your website, uh, most people know about microgreens and how to grow them, but on your website, you refer to micro herb garden. Uh, what is this, and is it much different than people growing the traditional microgreens that we're familiar with? Um, you know, it isn't really a whole lot different from what we classically know as growing microgreens. I just call it micro herb gardens because I really wanted people to have a really good kind of capture and image that they could have little mini microgreens, but you're using herb seeds instead of, you know, most people use different types of lettuces and, and, and things like that. And so um, you can grow little mini herb gardens, really, and you can start them any time of the year. It's just basically what you do with microgreens, uh, seeds in a tray, that kind of thing, and harvest them when they get about two to three inches. And, I absolutely love like a tray of little microgreen of basil and cilantro and parsley is another one of my favorites because those little tiny plants, just like a lot of microgreens, the um, the flavor of the herb is really hyper extended, so it's really intense. And that's what I really love. So I call them little micro herb gardens. It makes you think more beyond what people kind of tend to do with microgreens anyway. We move beyond lettuce and maybe try some herbs for some flavor. Okay. And we are talking with Sue Getz. She is a garden design writer and speaker. Now, some of us have trouble growing lavender. I know Joy and I have struggled with this. Um, but we would love to and have a, a lot of lavender. What are some tips for growing lavender? Um, you know, I think this is a, a question I always get asked. How can I grow my lavender? How What makes lavender happy? And so I usually kind of start with think about where lavender grows in its native environment. It grows on the hillsides, rocky soil in Mediterranean regions of the world. So it likes that kind of rocky, poor soil in the full sun. And so um, think about in your garden where you would maybe try to mimic that or really kind of give those conditions to the plant and you'll have much more success with lavender. So I always say find that sunny part of the garden where the soil is kind of cruddy and it's a little rocky and you don't need a whole lot of amendments. Um, you can just kind of put a lavender in there and let it go, and it'll thrive. So it just really needs that good drainage, 
It needs lots of warmth and sun. And so how can you kind of create your little Mediterranean corner in your garden? I think that's my best advice, and lavender will just do very well in those conditions. Well, you bring up a good point. As gardeners, we always want to make the plant grow where we want it to grow, not where it will grow. So uh, that's a good piece (laughs) of advice that you've offered us. Uh, Right. Right. <laughs> your your book, A Taste for Herbs, can you tell us what it's about and something our listeners may find very intriguing or, or really enjoy about it? Yeah, so A Taste for Herbs was, I wrote that because I wanted to really share with people how to capture the flavor of herbs. So it isn't really a cookbook with all the main dishes or anything like that. It's really how we take a plant from our garden that we're calling an herb because that's what it is, and we're infused it by taking that flavor, capturing it into seasoning salt and oil and vinegars and even infusing into honey, you know, infusing it into butter. And so it's kind of more the, the things you add to the main dish. What makes the main dish exciting is these seasonings and it's herbs. And, and so... In the book, I just really wanted to, to share how to really capture. I guess that's the best way I would put it, capture flavors. And so I have over 100 recipes to follow, but I really hit hard on 20 herbs that I'm sure everybody will know. They're very common, but I really hit on how to preserve them, what parts of the plant that you use, what's their growing conditions things like that, and so and, and harvesting, too. All of the things that help you to best capture flavor, that's what A Taste for Herbs was about. It's just really um, learning and exploring that seasoning aspect of, of the plant. That's, that's my favorite part, of course. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, um, how can our listeners find out more about you and your book and all of your great information? So um, you can find me a couple of different ways. I have um, my website, suget.com. I'm going to spell it S-U-E-G-O-E-T-Z dot com. And I also have um, my blog, herbloversgarden.com. And that's the place I would love people to go visit because that's where I'm throwing out some more recipes. I'm exploring. I just kind of... um, sharing all these things I'm learning from my garden or from others in their gardening realm of what they're doing and also excited um, and it's just going out on a new post right now. I have a new book coming out in December and and it's the first week in December. It's out on Amazon right now and it's about um, herb gardening in containers. So this makes it really accessible to everybody. So you can find more about the book at those places. And then if you're an Instagrammer, I'm Creative Gardener on Instagram, and you can find my little um, kind of herb wandering (laughs) there as well. Well, that book about growing herbs in containers, I think that that's going to be a hot one because everybody, you know, maybe you don't want to pull the real estate from your garden where you were going to put tomatoes and you put herbs, but you can surround your garden with those containers or in grow bags or whatever and and grow them that way. Yeah, totally. I'm so excited about this book because it really, I even um, dive a little deep into balconies and roofs and people that maybe just really don't have garden space um, don't want you to miss out on the greatness of growing herbs. And so this container gardening book really explores through that. And I even explore how to use pollinator herbs in containers and moving them in the garden where they're beneficial to the plants around it, like you're talking about your your veg garden and things like that. So there's lots of fun things coming out. I'm really excited about it. Well, Sue, we greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day to join not only Holly and myself, but all of our listeners across the country. Yes, and thank you so much for inviting me. I look forward. People can contact me um, on my website or whatever if they want to chat about herbs or have any questions. I'd love to to help with that as well. Absolutely, and thank you very much. And when we come back, it's time for some thank yous. You're listening to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show Program to help your garden grow better. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Protect your plants against damage with a 3-in-1 plant guard and special blend fertilizer. Visit ivyorganics.com. 
Wisconsin Greenhouse Company designs greenhouses specifically built for the northern Midwest climate. All of their greenhouses are made to withstand heavy snow and wind for years to come. They build freestanding and home-attached greenhouses for both commercial growers, schools, and backyard gardeners. Visit WisconsinGreenhouseCompany.com. For more information on pricing or to request a greenhouse catalog, go to WisconsinGreenhouseCompany.com. Do not go anywhere. There is more of the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener radio show to come, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool. To find the right size for your digging project, visit PowerPlanter.com. When it comes to bulk landscaping materials, Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center is where everyone goes. Whatever the project, we have the materials you need with over 40 varieties to choose from. Soils, mulches, gravels, decorative stones, fresh cut sod. Blue Mills has these products in stock and ready for easy pickup or fast delivery. So what are you waiting for? Now is the time to get your yard back into shape. Stop in and pick these materials up or call us for delivery today. Nobody does bulk landscaping materials better than Blue Mills Garden and Landscape Center. Blue Mills, 4930 West Loomis Road, 414-282-4220. The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show is brought to you by the following. Power Planter Earth Augers, Ivy Organics, Root Maker, Pomona Universal Pectin, Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, Pro Plugger, Tomato Snaps, World's Coolest Floating Rain Gauge. Find all sponsors at the WisconsinVegetableGardener.com and thank them for their support. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool. To find the right size for your digging project, visit PowerPlanter.com. Now here are your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Our final segment of our final show of season four. Welcome back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. We've got some people we want to thank and some information we want to share with you. When it comes to producing, now this is kind of a little behind the scenes, when it comes to producing a radio show, it's not just that we walk in, turn the mics on, and talk for an hour. There's hundreds and hundreds of hours that go into the production of the show over the course of, for us, 35 weeks and hundreds and hundreds and th- of, of hours and tens of thousands of emails in order to uh, contact companies and ask them, hey, here's what we do. Here's our platforms uh, across the country. Do you want to be part of the program and sponsor our show? Uh, and that's, that's Joey's full-time job. Right. Um, and I help as I can, but I have my own full-time job. Outside of all of this. So, you know, we, we won't get into too much detail because some of them is, is information that's only privy to us. But yeah, we, we spend, uh, about, um, 12 to 14 months working on an eight month show is kind of what it figures out to being. Mm-hmm. Um, when the show starts in March of season five, I will already be planning for season six that following year on how it's one of those things, you know, what, what will affect the domino that I knock over today? How is that going to affect the the sixth month or eighth month or ninth month uh, down the road dominoes? How is that going to all affect that? So um, it it sounds seamless when you listen to it. Um, but to us, you know, there's a lot of information, a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes in order to make the show what it is. There's a lot of Garden Talk radio shows on the air regionally and sometimes nationally based on where you find it some of them you know it's it, ours is very unique ours is content based many of the garden talk radio shows are please call in we're waiting for you to call in please call in with your question we wanted to deliver the content to you and then if a question comes up due to that content that was delivered then you can reach out to us via phone call or email in order to get the clarification in which is needed or additional information to provide for us. So that's how, um, that's how our show works. And, uh, we first want to thank, uh, God because that and faith, faith and God kind of go together, uh, because that has been the driving force behind, uh, this program. Uh, the way this program got started back in, it's actually January of 2016. Um, we attempted to do this on our own the previous year, failed miserably, 
And then I got laid off from a, um, the, the job that I had that was full time. And I told Holly, let's take a shot at this. And she said, no way. We're not going to do it. Don't even try it again because we'd failed so badly the, the previous be- year. Because we were, we were not very happy with each other at that point either. Well, we were trying to do a full time job part time. Yeah. You can't do, you can't reach out to companies at eight, nine, 10, 11 o'clock at night, and then they email you back and at, at 11 o'clock in the morning and say, hey, I want to give you a call. Let's talk about your sponsorship, and you're at work, and you can't do that. It's very difficult. Uh, so we took a leap of faith. Uh, faith is the substance of the things not yet seen, the evidence of the things hoped for. And uh, we hoped for the radio show. We not yet we had not yet seen the evidence of it, but we were able to make it on one station here in the Milwaukee area. And then uh, we expanded the the station, picked up a secondary frequency, and then we uh, stayed on that for two years. And then in year three, we expanded to six stations in four markets. And then this year, we're on 16 stations in around 10-plus markets. Next year, we're going to be on, as of right now, 15 stations in 10-plus markets across the country. We take a lot of leaps of faith. Right. Uh, <laughs> and, but that's know, okay. And that's, you know, we, we don't know who, we, we don't know whom is going to see the emails when we, we pray and we ask that the right person sees it and the right company finds us or we find the right company. And talking about those dominoes, they've all fell and they continue to fall in the right direction. And as they, if they continue to fall in the right direction, the right people get a hold of us and we get a hold of the right people, we feel that that is the path in which we are supposed to be on. When it becomes difficult and things do not fall in the direction, then we have to reevaluate the situation we're in and if we're continued to be on the path in which we're supposed to be on. Um, that said, and that's how the show started, uh, thank Holly. Uh, she sits over there. I run the button. She sits over there and kind of fills in places where I need to re- change things over here. That's all I do. Well, you do other things, but <laughs> you're able to make things seamless. Whenever I have a problem over here, you take over and make it sound like there's nothing wrong. And you just talk about whatever the topic is. And I'm scrambling over here trying to figure out why things have gone the way they've gone. And you can watch, you know, some of you watch us only on in-studio video. Other as of, of you only listen to us on the radio and or podcast replay or however it is. We thank you for that. We hear from you. You have wrote in across the country. And we thank you because without you and without you buying the products that the sponsors that we have found provide the, the finances in order to pay for the airtime that we're on, None of this happens. And we we love hearing from you. Yes. It's, it's very delightful to us when we have a call on the hotline or we get an email or whatever. I found you on this found, platform or I listen yeah. to you you know, on this station every week. And we thank you for that. That means a great deal to us. We take the winter off because we need a break. And there's not much activity in which can be talked about over the, the 17 weeks that we're off. However, um, if you're listening to us on WCRN 8.30 a.m. out of the Boston, Massachusetts area, uh, for the 17 weeks that we will not be creating new content, you will be able to listen to encore presentations of shows in Season 4 here. So uh, we appreciate that. We do want to say goodbye to two stations, uh, KMET 1490 a.m. out of Banning, California. We will be leaving that station as well as WRMN 1410 AM out of Elgin. Those, uh, we had to make a financial decision, uh, what was best for our business and the show. Uh, so we're replacing those two stations. We'll be in the uh, Denver area next year as well as the Pittsburgh area next year, uh, substituting those two. So, and, uh, next year our name or the, the, the content, the program, all the same. Our name will be different. Uh, it will transition from the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show to the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. And we've done that for a couple of reasons. Uh, regional confusion. Uh, if you're listening, you know, why why we listen to a Wisconsin garden show when we're in Kansas City or Minneapolis or Boston uh, or that type of thing. Mm-hmm. So that's the reason why we've done that. And we have to thank the sponsors. Some are returning. Some are not. Uh, they've all made decisions to be part of the show this year. And we appreciate that. Pro Plugger. Uh, Power Planter, our presenting sponsor, Pro Plugger, World's Coolest Rain Gauge, Root Maker, Tomato Snap, Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, Pomona Pectin, Ivy Organics, Dr. Jim's, Neptune's Harvest, Seed Savers Exchange, Water Hoop, MI Greenhouse, LLC, Phylum Bioproducts, Happy Leaf LED, DripWorks.com, We Grow Indoors, Deer Defeat, Harvest More, Blue Mills Landscape and Garden Center, Tree Ripe, 
W uh, uh, Chip Drop, Blue Ribbon Organics, Big Elk Garlic Farm, and Pearl's Premium Grass Seed. Uh, we thank all of those sponsors because without them and their financial contributions to the program, we are not on the air. Uh, anything else you want to add, Holly? Um, yeah, I just want to thank my family. Okay. They're, um, okay. <laughs> they're, they're, uh, they've been very supportive of us and yeah, like they, I think you would agree. Yes. Um, yeah. And also just, uh, my, my job. Yeah, which we're all working from home, and apparently I sneeze loud because um, <laughs> she works in uh, – the way our, our business is set up, she works in the studio for her business, and I work in the adjacent room for, for the, the radio show, and apparently I sneeze very loud, and uh, maybe she's got – have you gotten over that or, or not? I, I don't know. Um. So anyway. Yeah. Not, have you gotten over the sneezing? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So anyway, so yes. I want to thank my job because without without them, we wouldn't have um the ability for you to do this full time. Right. Which we, we've gotten better. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for sure. But yeah. still. And it's, it allows me to you know carry the insurance and things like that. Right. So we have we have that um and my family and then my friend Laura, she does all of our voiceover right. stuff. And she has, and she doesn't love doing it. No, she says she sound she doesn't like hearing herself on the <laughs> she doesn't radio. Like, yeah, she doesn't like hearing herself, but she doesn't mind doing it. No, and, um, and it's free. Yeah, right. And mm. she, I mean, usually I, I it's give free her, and it's good. Yeah, usually I give her like a box of chocolate or something, but yeah, she's and she's just a really good friend, and I have appreciated her for so much things. And um, what else? I think. Well, the you know with the in studio video, I mean, predominantly our show. Most of you capture our show on live on the the radio or on podcast replay, but we do offer the in studio video as another avenue in which you can see us and see what we look like and see our studio and and see how things uh, work that way. Um, so we do that as well. Um, and I just think that we should show appreciation to our other close friends, right, in our lives that have been supportive and helpful and just like bouncing ideas off of them and um yeah you don't know anything about gardening but read this <laughs> does this make sense to you or are you confused and there you know because we think we know what we're talking about or i mean just yeah. in general like i've you know i've gardening friends who are like what's your topic this week when you're doing the show and tell them and, then and there's they, people who listen to our show that don't garden right yeah that too I had, I had one of my friends who told me that she just wanted to she doesn't even like vegetables that much but she was curious about our show and and said that she really she really enjoyed it. So we appreciate all of you, even if you garden or not, or right. like vegetables or not, that are listening. Well, I'll leave. Uh, we'll leave with this. Um, we will return March first weekend in March in twenty twenty one for season five of then the gardening with joy and holly radio show i'll leave with this it's a quote from steve harvey comedian and tv personality uh he had a lot of struggles in his life and he got uh, found god and found uh, the path in which he needed to be on but he said this and this applies to everybody who is struggling or has a dream or a goal in which you're trying to achieve and it doesn't matter if you're 14 or 44 or 84 everybody has a goal that they want to achieve he, he said in life everybody has a turn back moment you have a moment where you could go forward or you can give up but the thing about the giving up part keep this in mind before you give up if you give up that's the guarantee that whatever you're working for will never happen that guarantee of quitting kills that dream that will never happen. Nowhere under the sun will that dream happen. The only way that's possible to remain is if you can make the dream happen is to never give up. No matter what, no matter how hard it is, continue to push through and the dream and the goal will get achieved. That's uh, paraphrasing from Steve Harvey. So until next year, if you got a question, if you've got a, a, a comment or whatever you want, phone lines are going to be open all through the off season. Email is going to be available all through the off season. You can certainly get a hold of us both ways. Uh, we appreciate you taking time and listening to our program. Until next year, for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. <laughs>